Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In the last video, we talked briefly about how uh, what XML is. It's basically just a text format for storing information, and the advantage that it has over flat text, which is that it provides structure to, to what you create. And we looked at, the, at two examples of things in flat text files. Uh, one was a, uh, a map file that some people might have done as a project in the chapter on, on uh, case classes. And the other uh, would have been a grade sheet where you wanted to have comments for, for students. Um, now because the, the map file is actually a project that continues on through the book, I'm not going to show you how to do the XML for that because there might be a number of people watching this who that's, that is the project they're supposed to work on is to write that XML. Instead, I want to talk about the, uh, the grades. And so the question is, how do we format our XML? So if I come over up here and I open the grades.txt file, my goal is to make an XML file that stores the same information but has um, more inside of it. Uh, so it's it's not just the username grade grade grade. Uh, for one thing you might notice another challenge with this is that this does not tell us what these grades are for. Okay, maybe this was a test and this was a quiz and this is an assignment. I don't know. We might have had headers on this. It's possible to put in another line here. Uh, quiz 1 Quiz 2 test one, something like that. And then there is a correspondence between these, and so then, then at least they're labeled. Um, but yeah, there, there are still some things that are, that are lacking from this. It's, it's a very nice tabular format, and as long as the user understands a certain amount of what's being expressed there, it's very efficient. But it doesn't work for some additional things. So how would I go about doing this in XML? So we saw last time that XML files have lots of things that uh, look like this in them. Um, okay, so this is what's called a tag. So XML data is uh, basically broken into into two parts. There's the the basic text that's inside of there, and then there is markup. And the markup comes in two flavors, um, tags and, and special characters. All the tags sit between less than and greater than symbols. Um, and they come in, in some ways, three basic flavors. This is what's called a start tag. If I put a slash here, this is what's called an end tag. And if I put a slash he here, this is an empty element tag. And that, that last one indicates that the tags are used to build something else. In fact, in fact, we have a start and end. They're used to build what are called elements. So it turns out that that and that represent the same thing. These are both empty student elements. Um, the difference between the two is that this one has to be empty, and here I can put whatever I want inside of here, including extra markup, if this were HTML, except you're not supposed to use bold anymore, but um, then I might put in something like that. So I can put whatever I want between the start student tag and the end student tag. These tags, just like uh, parentheses and, and brackets and stuff, so if I had a formula and I was using both uh, parentheses and brackets. I have to close off the brackets before I close off the parentheses here, and if you ever see something that looks like that, that should register poorly inside of your head. These things need to be matched up. Same thing goes for my tags. Because the B tag started inside of the student tag, it has to end inside of the student tag as well. Uh, so you can make these things called elements either by joining a start tag with an end tag or having an empty element tag. Uh, you can also put 
information inside of your start tags. So inside of your start tags and, or your empty element tags, you can specify attributes. So in the case of a student, if there's a piece of simple information, like the student's name, yeah, you can specify it inside of here. And this works for, whoops, I'm missing an equal sign. That's, So an attribute always has the format of the name of the attribute and an equal sign, followed by a string in quotes. Um, if you've played with HTML, HTML doesn't always require these quotes. Your XML needs to have the quotes. That is a requirement for it to be properly formatted uh, XML. Now there's the question of should I make this an attribute or should I put a tag inside of here? Um, because I could also have done something like this. And so there's the question of how should you decide which one to do. I'm going to format this a little bit differently uh, because if I had a, a long element like this, this is what I'd want to do. Should I go with the attribute or should I go with, with this? And the way that I would answer that, there, there is no hard and fast rule for this. You only get one attribute of each specifier though. So if you only have one of something, so for example, your student only has one name, that kind of points towards an attribute, assuming that it's fairly simple. So if you only have one and it's fairly simple, then I would recommend an attribute. If, it's, if you're gonna have lots of them, so for example, I have lots of quiz grades, uh, and I would actually suggest so let's look at this again. So I have for uh, 78 and I have a test grade of 100 there. Oops. Okay. So I would generally put the name up here, not down in there, because I only have one name and, and it's a simple value. But in the case of my grades, I have multiple quizzes, I have a test. Uh, just what something else that I might do that? In the case of our map, or actually for our student, let's say I wanted to have a comment uh, just for the a student level comment. Okay, um, why would I do it this way? Well, particularly if the comment got long and it was going to span multiple lines or whatnot, then I can you know, put in new lines or, or whatnot. I can do some formatting that I can't really do nicely inside of an attribute. So if it's, if it's gonna be longer, even if there's only one, even if there's only one student level comment that I'm allowed to make, uh, I would still put it down here instead of as an attribute, simply because of the length of the text. For it. So let's recap. Recap. Tags have less than and greater than around them. They come in three flavors. There's a start tag. There's an end tag, which has a slash uh, before the name. And there is an empty element tag, which has the slash right before the greater than, um, and it does not need an end tag. You put these together to form elements and the start and the empty element, so whatever is the first part, the first tag in your element can have attributes associated with it which have a name uh, and a value and the value needs to be a string in quotes. You can nest elements inside of other elements as well as general text or whatever you want. Um, and this text here is referred to as the, the content of, of the tags that it's nested inside of. So. That's it for this video. We'll come back and we'll add a few more options um, on to, to what we can put into our XML. And then the video after that, we'll look at how we can start putting that into Scala.